Western Europe, of course, is essentially lost. It's not a secret anymore. We've filled our countries with low-skilled sand wizards <laughs> who refuse to work and are instead collecting government checks. I've never worked out if that's racist or not. I just came up with it one day and it sounded funny. Now, don't let me create the impression in your minds that um, everything in Europe is terrible. Uh, Eastern Europe is showing an amazing amount of backbone. Poland, it could barely look after itself 75 years ago, is now one of the great bastions of freedom and civilization. And Hungary, which, like your didgeridoos, was formerly just something that sounded funny at the end of a joke. Wonderful. Budapest, formerly best known for second-rate orchestras and third-rate hookers. I speak from experience. I was one of those hookers. <laughs> now, a stalwart of freedom, something that we can all learn from. 30 years ago, Eastern Europe was a collection of communist countries ruled by Moscow. But now, Poland is leading the charge. And these are the countries where women don't need to fear going out at night. They don't need to fear being raped or having trucks pointed at them or fearing acid attacks. Reaction from the rest of the world to Poland, of course, has been predictable. American journalists just call them racist. But these clever, slippery Poles I'm an expert in slippery poles. But none of them has been, have been as, as, effect, as effective and impressive as the ones in Warsaw. Polish citizens have taken to the streets to demonstrate love for their country and for their culture. And the response from American journalists has been to call them Nazis. They're calling Polish people Nazis. It's almost as retarded as calling a gay Jewish immigrant with a black husband a white supremacist. 